This video is going to be exciting as we are going to connect and interact with XRP Ledger using XRPL client library. So let me comment this out and we don't need this and hence we don't need, okay, we don't need all these things. Let me import XRPL client and then create an instance of it. So if no argument is provided here, the default endpoints this library will connect to is xrplcluster.com. If it fails, it falls back to xrpl.link and then S2 Ripple, finally, if nothing works. And if you have your own WebSocket URL, you can pass it as a string or else you can pass an array with multiple endpoints to be used in that specified order. Now let's create a method called main uh, let me even call it because most of the time I forget to call it and wonder why it's not working. So most of the methods on client are, are promises. So I'll use asynchronous method here. Inside main, I'll simply console log some message, maybe inside main or something like that. So observe here, when I execute this script, look at the speed with which this message gets output to this window. It's almost instant, right? Now let's use a method on client, which returns a promise. So I'll use await keyword client dot ready. It only returns once it connects to the ledger. We won't output anything here. We are just going to observe the time it takes to connect to the ledger. Now it's taking a couple of seconds. Did you observe that? It takes a couple of seconds and then outputs the next line of code, which is in inside main. Now let's see another method on client, which doesn't return a promise. So client, the method is get stat. It has information about ledger and we want to fetch the last ledger. So this doesn't return a promise. So let me output the result here and remove this or comment this line of code. Now let's execute the script. and it returns zero, which is a wrong result. Maybe it's trying to execute this line of code before the client is connected to the ledger. So let me remove the comment and execute it once again. And maybe it's giving right result now. Let's check that with the actual ledger information present on this XRP ledger explorer. So now let me rerun this script and see if it returns the last ledger number. Let me pause this. And the last ledger index number is same. So let's try that once again. And it's returning the exact result. That means it's working. So let me expand it. So whenever you are using a method on client, which doesn't return a promise, you better use client dot ready method before it so that it doesn't throw unexpected weird kind of errors. Okay. So that's why we use client dot ready. Now let's learn about one of the important methods on client object, which is send method, which takes object as its first parameter. And this send method is the, is how primarily any application communicates with XRP ledger to fetch the data. It returns promise by the way. This send method looks for a field called command inside this object. Today we shall see a command called account info. This should be written as is. It also takes another field called account, obviously to fetch the information about this account we pass in here. So let's ask the account information from the user. So process.argv, this is at position zero. This is at position one and this is at position two. Let's ask for our address now. Okay. So now let's, this send method returns a promise. It has information about the R address, the user passed through the command line. Okay. There are a couple of other optional fields. For example, there is a field called ID. If this script was hosted somewhere where we have a lot of users, if you want to know who executed this, 
you can pass in a username to this ID. I'll just pass one. Now one more important thing to think here. Here we are connecting to the main net, but our R address is active only on the test net. So we need to connect our script to the test network. Let, let us see what happens if we try to fetch the information of this address on main network. It just tells us that this account is not found because we are we have not activated it on main network, right? So let's get WebSocket URL of a test network server and then pass it to this XRPL client library which connects to this test network. Now let's rerun the script with the same R address which we have activated on the test network. This should output some information about this address. And as you can see, it outputs some of the informations, uh, which we will see shortly. We have another R address which is not active on testnet. You can just pass it and check for the result yourself. Now what happens if the user inputs his or her secret? It outputs the same result. But we don't want our script to behave like this. We only want to accept our address and not the secret from the user. So there is a field called strict. Just enable it. That is pass true to it. By default, it's false. If you pass true to this and then pass your family seed or secret to it, it will result in error and it will tell you that the account is malformed. Now let's see by passing it the right R address. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it works when you pass it R address and not your secret. But what if when the user enters wrong R address? It just returns account malformed error, but we can handle this more gracefully using a helper library. Let's import utils method and let's check the user input inside main method before executing client.send method. So if utils, I think it has a method called is valid address. Yes. As the name suggests, it checks the validity of the R address we pass to it. So it returns true if the R address is valid. So if it's not a valid R address, then let us output some message to the console that is invalid R address and then exit the process. And if the R address is valid, then it just skips this if and continues executing the client.send method which outputs the result onto the console window. So this is the right R address which prints out the result by the way. Now let us remove the 9 from the end of this address. So it clearly outputs invalid R address. Now let me come inside and randomly delete a word and insert zero. Zero is not should not be present inside an R address. So it accurately tells us that this is an invalid R address. So pretty useful utility library. So now nothing much left. This was an interesting video, but now Let's output the results. Oops, I think we have a zero in between here. Yeah, so let me copy the right R address from our information.txt file here. So that's why I stored all this information on a separate file, which is very handy for me. So let's output some of the important informations from this output. So ledger entry type is account root. This is very important. Account root 
object holds your account balance owner count your accounts sequence number these are very important informations and the balance as you can see it is 15 million here which means 15 xrp because 1 million drops is equal to 1 xrp that means if you see 15 million drops which means 15 xrp okay so owner count is also one of the important fields we will discuss it in a separate video and sequence number is important when we are sending a payment transaction that's it for now and maybe the current index number now let me clear this and execute it so as you can see we can fetch the fields the value of the fields we need in our applications like this so this was an introduction to connecting and interacting with xrp ledger so let's see what we learned in today's video at the very top we have pure node.js syntax to check if user entered right command to execute this script and this is the library we are using to connect to the xrp ledger particularly to the testnet so this is the utility function to check if the user has entered right r address if the user has entered correct r address we execute this function which is client.send to retrieve account information of the account the user passed as an argument and then finally we output the results we need from this client.send method so that's it for now in upcoming videos let's see how we can use other commands to retrieve some other information about the ledger and in particularly particular R address.